probably be next, although if someone has like a really great five minute presentation they've been saving, <laughs> this is your time to shine. If anyone has any questions about the certification, um, I'm standing here, so I'm happy to answer them. But if not, we'll pull together. So if I certify on the older system, let's go after these Great question. The question is, if I, if I certify on the older system, do I have to recertify? No, you do not. We ported over all the certifications to the new system, so you're all good. I will say, and we'll send out an email probably tomorrow about this, um, I do encourage you to double check your listing because when we ported it, not all the fields were the same, so like most of it will be fine, but especially the licensing information, we had to make some educated guesses about what was going on, and so there's no rush, but if you have time, it's probably worth double checking your listing, making sure everything is right. If not, just write in and we'll, uh, we can update it. It's not a big deal. But yeah, no, old numbers are still good. Um, there is an issue around the UK numbers because uh, I didn't realize that the two, the two character country code for the UK is GB, not UK. So we're working on transitioning those, but that's a, an edge case. Other questions? <laughs> Is the is the uh, is the app still available in GitHub? Are you walking? We'll find out. We'll get you an answer. Probably yes, but we'll find out. And we'll put links. We'll have links to everything um, with the videos, so you'll be able to track it down. And then you too can poke Facebook in the eye. I'm not encouraging you to poke Facebook in the eye, but if you're so inclined, the tools will probably be available on the internet. Yeah. Just minutes to yeah. Everyone shares an Ashwa. Yes, it's a. Uh, okay. Uh, talking about uh, indie hardware in Japan, uh, from Sweet Science Tokyo. Uh, uh, just only five. Yes. Okay, our company is running an uh, indie hardware market in Tokyo. In, uh, you know that uh, Japanese uh, common indie designer is uh, making themselves uh, many unique products like this. This is a pen. Uh, no mechanics, no electricity inside, but you can see that some flicker from the, uh, mecha flicker from the mechanism injection molding. Mm. You can see the uh, swimming uh, pen, uh, uh, swimming person on the pen. This is uh, uh, made by the famous Japanese book author, not a professional maker and not a professional producer, but he wants to make things and share them idea. And the other one, also DIY product in Japan, not, uh, not so profitable, he made a uh, Motorola 68000 motherboard, not a 68000, 1970s quite an old, old computer, but he uh, making the loose kit, uh, learning from the culture from the homebrew computer clubs. In Japan, is a... Uh, in these four years, in Japanese DIY is uh, quite a... Uh, popular to the selling in the market. You know already uh, Japan having a very strong otaku culture, uh, he's saying the own comic book on the comic market in Japan. But now the uh, young people and old people making things to share uh, to the market uh, from the sweet science. Uh, our company, Sweet Science, is running the marketplace for Japanese DIY. And our number of sorting is uh, getting bigger and bigger in this, in this year, like this one now. This uh, is selling the uh, market size on US data. Uh, we start to uh, DI market at uh, four years ago, 2014. In this year, uh, one year around uh, 136,000 uh, per year, means uh, well, almost similar as one Toyota or one Hyundai. In last year, 2017, uh, grow, uh, four times grown in this, uh, five times grown in this five years, uh, this four years. 6,000 means uh, not so huge, but uh, bigger than ever than uh, in these four years. Uh, you know the Japanese manufacturing and the economic sub economical uh, services are still going down in this year. You can see New York Times or Economist in Japanese manufacture, maybe 
セリングトゥチャイナバングラフトフェイングバッド DIY in Japan is a still strong Please come to Tokyo Maker Fair You can see more and more people selling the product in Tokyo Thank you Thank you That was fantastic I love that the Open Hardware Summit is a place where I can say Does anyone have a five minute presentation? And we have in-depth data rich presentations about <laughs> The maker movement in Japan, this is why this is my favorite day of the year. <laughs> yeah, I still believe uh, hardware startup is very nice, but uh, hardware startup is a job. Making things is a life. <laughs> that could be the, the theme of the day. Uh, we're pulling together the, the speakers, so thank you all for your patience. Um, are there other questions that people have while we, while we pull? Oh, great. Sarah is on her way. So if there is question singular, we can answer it. Or we can just bring her up now. Yeah, that's amazing. Love that. <laughs> Quick question. Yes. It's a great question. So what happens if someone tries to open source a, a, a hardware project that's sort of wrapped up in intellectual property? One of the core concepts that we worked through for the first version of the certification was this idea of, the, of your contribution. So the idea is you must open source everything that is within your capacity to open source. So if you've developed the chip, it's within your capacity to open it. If you've, opened, if you've developed the firmware, it's within your capacity to open it. But if you are purchasing it or acquiring something from a third party, you have no ability to force them to open it. So you have to document, you have to make available to people in the, in the bomb what's, what's there. But as long as it doesn't require an NDA to access it, you have fully open sourced it. And so that is the kind of key distinction for open source hardware, is you're allowed to use uh, parts that aren't necessarily open as long as you're opening everything that you have and you have the ability to open. So you ready? 